With the 2020 presidential election ongoing, we thought that it would be a good time to explain some of the other political parties in the United States. Yep, yeah, you heard me right. Believe it or not, there are actually other parties besides the Democrats and the Republicans. So in this video, we're going to explore the different third parties in the US, what their general platforms are, what role they play in US politics, and why they seem to be suppressed by the two major parties. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to be notified whenever we post new videos. If you want to really support the channel, you can also sign up to back us on Patreon, where in return for your monthly donations, you'll get early access to some of our videos, behind the scenes posts and more. There's a link to that in the description below. Before we get into the actual parties, a little bit of background. In 1789, the new US Constitution had just been ratified. George Washington assumed the presidency, and the new government began to take shape. Not long after the new government assumed power, however, political parties began to form along ideological lines. The first two parties were the Federalists, under the leadership of Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton, and the Democratic Republicans, under the leadership of Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson. As the new government was based on the idea of federalism, that is, sharing power between the national government and the states, these factions developed around the concept of government power, and where that power should reside. In other words, whether the federal government or state government should have more power. The Federalists advocated for strong national government, while the Democratic Republicans wanted the states to have authority, and thus supported a weak national government. In his farewell address to the nation in 1797, George Washington described the dangers of political parties, saying, In contemplating the causes which may disturb our union, it occurs as matter of serious concern that any ground should be furnished for characterising parties by geographical discriminations, northern and southern, Atlantic and western. Whence designing men may endeavour to excite a belief that there is a real difference of local interests and views. One of the expedients of parties to acquire influence within particular districts is to misrepresent the opinions and aims of other districts. Basically, Washington is saying that the formation of political parties, particularly on the basis of geography, whereby different regions of the country are bound to different political parties, is a dangerous precedent to set. Obviously though, despite Washington's warnings, political parties did develop, and at the time, developed around the geographical regions of the country. Ultimately, by the time that the Civil War broke out in 1861, the Democrats and the Republicans had already solidified themselves as the two primary national parties, and it's been pretty much that way ever since. Third parties have popped up occasionally throughout history, However, unfortunately, in order to keep the third parties from being viable national parties, the two main parties would absorb third platforms, thus eliminating the need for these third parties. In modern times, there have only been three elections where a third party candidate had enough support to pose a threat, to some degree, to the two major parties. Strom Thurmond in 1948, George Wallace in 1968, and Ross Perot in 1992. As you can see from these maps, while Thurmond and Wallace were successful at gaining electoral votes in the American South, none of the three attempts came anywhere near the required majority in the Electoral College to win the presidency. However, it is worth noting that some have accused third-party candidates of swinging elections. Ross Perot's run in 1992, for example, was credited at the time as the factor that led to Bill Clinton's win that year. However, other studies on that election have claimed that Perot took votes from both President Bush and then-Governor Clinton about equally. That said, in recent years, third parties have not been anywhere near as successful. Overall, third parties haven't gained any electoral votes since 1968. However, they have gradually increased their share of votes in recent years. For example, in 2012, Gary Johnson, the Libertarian candidate, garnered less than 1% of the vote share. In 2016, however, Johnson was again the Libertarian nominee and gained just over 3%, the highest vote share of any third-party candidate since Ross Perot's 1996 performance. 
So let's take a look at the individual parties. There are three main third parties that are recognised in at least 10 states. The Libertarian Party, the Green Party and the Constitution Party. The Libertarian Party was founded in 1971 and in their words, we seek to substantially reduce the size and intrusiveness of government and cut and eliminate taxes at every opportunity. Basically, libertarians believe that the size of government has grown too powerful and controls too many aspects of the lives of citizens. Their platform seeks to reduce the size and scope of government with the goal of increasing the rights of the individual, including legalising all drugs and prostitution, reducing and or eliminating taxes wherever possible, and allowing people to have determination over their own lives, including abortion and sexual orientation. The inspiration for the US Green Party began in 1984, with the formation of the State Green Party in Maine, and garnered even more strength with the formation of the Green Parties in Germany and the United Kingdom in the early 1990s. And like the Green Parties of Europe, the US Green Party is focused on instituting policies in the United States that foster and promote the protection of the environment and the planet including support for the Green New Deal, a list of proposals aimed at tackling climate change and converting to renewable energy alternatives. It's worth noting here that the Green Party, while primarily concerned with policies that impact the environment, are also interested in other issues as well. They support Medicare for All, independence for the US colony of Puerto Rico, and the legal status of undocumented immigrants. According to their website, the Constitution Party was founded in 1992 as the US Taxpayers Party and then changed its name in 1999 to better reflect the party's primary focus of returning government to the US Constitution's provisions and limitations. With regards to issues like education and drugs, the party believed that states should make those decisions and that the federal government simply does not have a role to play in those issues. In fact, the Constitution Party believes in the privatisation of healthcare and social security and advocates for the gradual phasing out of social security to private companies. The Constitution Party has had more difficulty in gaining a national profile than the other third parties, largely because of ballot access. In 2016, the Libertarian Party had ballot access in all 50 states, while the Greens had only 44, with write-in access in three further states. By comparison, the Constitution Party only had ballot access in 24 states, with write-in access in 22. This is because states have complicated procedures to get candidates' names on the ballot. These procedures usually include a fee and a petition in which candidates gain signatures. It's also worth noting that these procedures vary from state to state. Now, this brings me to a very important point. Third parties in the US have been largely unsuccessful in their bid to influence US politics for two reasons. One, because the two major parties have usually usurped important parts of the third party's agenda. And two, because of the winner-takes-all system in US political elections that puts third parties at a significant disadvantage. The usurpation of third party ideas is not a new concept in US politics. Probably the most recent example of this phenomenon was in the 1968 presidential candidacy of American Independent Party candidate George Wallace. Wallace ran on a platform of segregation and states' rights. Essentially, Wallace believed that it was not the place of the federal government to force the issue of integration as it had done after the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education decision in which the Supreme Court ordered the integration of US public schools. Now, we're not saying that Wallace's views on segregation are rooted in racism, but they probably were. However, after his run, the Republicans adopted the state's rights position, which began to solidify a political realignment, particularly in the American South. As we mentioned earlier, in 2016, Gary Johnson, the Libertarian nominee for president, gained about 3% of the vote nationally. However, because states award electoral votes to the person who gained the most votes within that state, Johnson was not awarded any electoral votes. It's worth noting that the winner-takes-all system is decided by each state, 
The only states not to adopt the system are Nebraska and Maine, who both award electoral votes based on the congressional districts within their states. In 2008 and 2016, both states gave one electoral vote to a candidate that did not win the state as a whole. Nebraska in 2008 awarded their second congressional district to Barack Obama, and in 2016, Maine awarded its second congressional district to Donald Trump. As a result of this winner-takes-all system, third parties find it nearly impossible to gain the required number of electoral votes. What do you think, though? Should third parties and their role in US politics increase? Should the Electoral College award votes proportionally or keep the winner-takes-all system? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name listed at the end of the videos, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link in the description.